Welcome back to the unfinished project, guys. In true unfinished project fashion, Neil. Hello. Still unfinished. <laughs> <laughs> but we have done. We've been very busy in between time. We have been. We've been. We're silent and bragging now. Been to Portugal. Might have been to Portugal. Go to Portugal for work. We've been rained on a lot. We've been rained on perfect a lot. Time to here. be in the garage. It is a perfect time, and to be honest, it there has a lot been done to this bike. There has been. You might remember when you left us last time, we were kind of mostly disassembled. Um, we had a frame with dirty bits on it, didn't we? We had, we, we, we had a rolling chassis, we, well, yeah, we had an engine in there, but we didn't have much else. No, <laughs> and now we have just a massive pile of bits. And I must confess, put my hands up here, got to that depressing place. You know that being a project where you've torn it to pieces and you're like, oh, I had a bike. Now I don't have a bike anymore. I've just got a pile of scrap metal. I'm kind of there with it at the moment. No, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, yeah. It's actually the neatest I've seen you do any project because this is very, very quick. For, for an, un I mean, the name's very apt, unfinished projects, but this is the quickest I've seen you do anything in this garage. So <laughs> it's pretty good. I'll take that as a compliment. I'm not really sure it was, but. So we stripped the rest of the bike. Actually, the rest of the bike came apart super easy. No more rounded bolts, no more snapped off bolts. So she just kind of flew to pieces. Um, and we got the bits off the powder coating, so the first batch of powder coating has been done. Now, we use a company called PPS, which is local to us in South Wales. There are a ton of different places you can use for powder coating. Go on a recommendation for a friend, because you want good quality, thick powder coating. You want to give your motorcycle parts to someone you trust, um, and you want the price. Some places are mega expensive, some places are mega cheap. Best practice, aim somewhere in the middle. PPS I've used a lot now. I give them a lot of my own parts, a lot of my, my own work as well. And yeah, they, they did a fantastic job. So Neil, we have, I don't know if you've seen these yet, we have got some excitement. We have got, drum roll. Yes. That's cool. We have got a frame. Got a frame. frame That's pretty good, look at that. And, and you know what? I know it's blue, and I know KTM's are meant to be orange, but I have a nerdy fact here. Yeah. So KTM's are currently orange. Mm -hmm. What colour did they used to be? Well, they used to be in blue and white because I remember uh, going off my off-road side of things. One of my sort of heroes, Paul Edmondson. He's um, he, uh, very loads of pictures of him riding, but he had a, a KTM which he I'm not sure if he won the six day on it, but. It was very much, it was blue frame, white, oh, it's beautiful. Anyway, that's a cool colour. I like that. So there we go. Blue KTMs are allowed. It's just now that they're only orange. So in my mind, it's justified. I also kind of wanted something a bit different. There's tons of really, really nicely done 950s out there. Mm. A lot of people have done the orange, the white, the black. And I kind of wanted to do my own version. So that's cool. Yeah, I like that. Old school colours. Nice. Nice blue powder coated frame. That's cool. And since we last worked on this bike we have had a little bit of help so we had a couple of couple of manuals sent through to us from Haynes everyone knows Haynes manuals you know a sad fact go on <laughs> I, I, go on <laughs> I, I used to read my dad had a Haynes manual for his fire blade when I was a kid yeah and I used to read the Haynes manual that one's when cool, I was yeah. like nine so these aren't bike specific they're adventure motorcycle maintenance manual so that one's it. a Trail maintenance one from Haynes, and this one is building the ultimate adventure motorcycle. So about travel prep. Um, yeah, we had a flip through. There's a few good little hints and tips in here. of your garage, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, that bike, that's got a finished motorcycle. Ah, okay. <laughs> I can't be my garage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and some of this stuff isn't going to apply to us because this bike's being built as a rally bike, not so much as a travel bike. But some of these little adventure trip tips and tricks. Look at that! And look at that! There's a KTM in it. KTM LCA 950 990 Adventure Servicing. There we go. We're <laughs> going to read that in great detail later on. So yeah, a couple of books to help us through it. Any information you can get is gold. We mentioned before the KTM 950 Info website, which has got a ton of stuff on it. Any information you can get before you start on the project. And it's kind of how I keep myself motivated as well. On the days yeah. you can't get to the garage when you're on a flight, just sitting there scrolling through forums, scrolling through the internet, grabbing a book load your brain up with knowledge so that you can maximize your time in the garage. Let's have a look at this frame and get some powder coating here. Trust standing knife. Oh, don't mark the new frame, Neil. Oh, 
when it goes to powder coat and they uh, they sandblast it to start with, get all the uh, all the old paint and rust and gook off of it. Um, and then what happens is they kind of mask off bits as best they can, but quite often you end up with a bit of paint and a bit of powder coat where you. That is making me very, very happy. You can see just where they've masked it up, you've just got a little bit of a lip on the edge there. So I'm just going to try and clean those lips off, get it so that it's ready to accept all the new shiny components. You can see at this point, you definitely don't want to be putting anything muddy, grubby and old on it, do you? It is way too beautiful to have old, <laughs> old, unclean components put onto it. Yeah, that's, uh, that looks awesome. So, on the whole, it actually looks like they have masked all of the threads up pretty damn well. There's just a couple of little burrs around the edges of holes that I want to tidy up. So, an awesome tool, my good friend Dave. From... Tell us all about your tool. <laughs> this is Dave from Aeon Sports Cars, his top tip. Hi, right, Dave. He is a lot better at this stuff than I am, but this is a deburrer. So, it's got a little blade on it. And you put it in the hole. Show us your deburrer again. You wind it around like that. Look at that, look. And it just takes the edge off the burn. Chris deburr. <laughs> wind round. Nice. Is that not the most useful little gadget you've ever seen? That's cool. Here's my oil tank. That kind of sits at the front of the bike. It's quite visible on the 950. And again, it was all flaky. All the paint was corroded. Like the, the tank was corroded and the paint was flaking off left, right and centre. So we had that powder coated as well, and that has come up absolutely beautiful. And you might sometimes you wonder why I go to all the trouble of powder coating when you could just paint this stuff, but you just end up with a much better, much tougher finish when you powder coat it. If you're a really good painter and you've got a spray booth and you prep it all properly, you can get just as good a finish, but in reality, not many of us have that. We've got spray cans in the backyard, so if you can get it done better, Get it powder coated. Chris, what have we got here? So, the nice people at EBC Brakes, one of the things I did notice on the KTM before we pulled it apart was the brakes were pumped. I think mm. the brakes they were hopeless. So I asked EBC to send us some nice new brakes. So, big shout out to the guys at EBC Brakes. They have sent us double H centered brake pads. Um, I used to use them on my first ever race bike many, many years ago. So the Double H is a centered pad. It's a little bit more aggressive on the disc, um, but it gives you a bit more bite, a bit more power, so. Now they've also sent us um, some new discs. Now, again, I'm not one of those people who likes to read on the internet forums about like, oh, these bikes always do this. Because again, the KTM 950, everyone says, oh, they all do this. They always have this problem with the brake howling. And I don't like to just like, take that as gospel because there's definitely sometimes other things that work there but I have to say the KTM 950 has non-floating discs as standard and they howl and they make loads of noise and they're not that good so EBC have sent us these absolute beauties a set of floating discs so they've got these little pins so there's a chance for they the are disc. beautiful so that is the disc it's going to replace the grubby old and that is the Pitted. The work of art that is going on. Should Bit we, uh, ridged. We're going to put you on the line here, EBC, because we're going to see if this fits. Look at that. Holes line up, same diameter. Beautiful. That is a work of art. And again, the same on the front. Uh, uh, a solid rear disc isn't unusual, but again, solid front discs are pretty unusual in bikes these days. And EBC were going to try and find me. A pair of floaters. <gasps> Ooh Look at the box. Look that the box. is a special box as well. Now, I've taken the mickey out of unboxing videos on the internet for years, <laughs> and I think we might be making one now, but that is pretty sexy. Made in the UK. They are beautiful, hey? Look at that. Compared to the muck that's coming off of there, that is gorgeous. What's, what's the plan then? Are we, so we've got piles. So we've, we've got, got piles. piles. We've got terrible so, piles. Swing arm. Oh. Oh. That's good. So we're, we're, so we're going to replace the bearings. So are we writing a list about bearings or? 
Are we not going to... Should we have a list? Let's have a list. Let's get let's a, list. a list. Let's get a list. I big, a list. Big lump of cardboard and a permanent marker. It's going to be a long list, Neil. It's going to be a long list. It's going to oh, be a long, old list. a long bit of paper there. So, yeah, swing arm is good. Shock, so we've got some exciting news. We got a little bit of help from WP Suspension. They've agreed to take a look at our museum piece shock and forks. Um, we're going to go through those bits and pieces and kind of try and refresh everything, get everything a bit newer, a bit better. Try and twist their arm into giving us some uh, some nicer components and a new spring and stuff. So yeah, WP are going to help us out with that, which is awesome. But the shock needs to come off. The swing arm needs cleaning up, and then that can go so, in the ready to go pile. So we, so we, we need swinging arm bearings. So swing arm bearings. Swinging armature bearings. Swing in arm or then, swing arm? Should we go American, swing arm? Swing arm. <laughs> it's like bringing back memories of my childhood. My uncle used to tell me off if I called it a swing arm. I used to have, have, have to call it the full swinging <laughs> armature. Swinging arm. So, uh, how's the chain sliders on that? Are they, they, they need replacing, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> <They're mint. laughs> That's the state of that. I can't even see the Do chain. You know, right, I'm not sure if you can see it, but the chain has worn away the swinging arm. Yeah, that's not right, is it? No. Do you want a new one of them then? I'm. I'm gonna go. You're a fussy bugger, aren't you? I'm gonna go. We <laughs> might even go chain. to the point of actually having a little bit of an alley weld on going on. No. Chain yeah. rubbing strip. Right. Chain rubbing strip. That is a swing and I'm good, yeah? You're swing happy with that? Amazing. So that can go in what pile? That That's can go a clean. with the wheels. That's in the clean pile, yeah. That can go with the wheels then. Clean up. So in there with the wheels. Clean meat. Exhausts. Exhaust. These are actually pretty good. Now, are you planning on keeping them exhaust or are we going full rally? I haven't decided yet. I would like a full rally exhaust, but in they're, the, in the interest good, of not blowing the budget completely, these are a set of wings super flow silencers they're tidy um, they're light they're tidy they're in good condition so they just need to be cleaned up I think they just need a clean up and they'll be good on the bike some card now that <laughs> is a messy some card no it's clean though it's clean now with this do you reckon we can polish that I'm a little bit I'd like polished metal you like polished what metal dear we can polish that you can polish that then oh, <laughs> that brilliant. sounds perfect oh, brilliant. No, that, you know. it was made in Germany that's the original one. And again, you know what? Again, this is an area, there's tons of aftermarket bits there available. Is, yeah. um, what I don't want is I don't want to add a ton of weight. No. Like that's a pretty decent sum guard. It's not too heavy. It's sturdy. Let's, let's not say heavy. It's sturdy, isn't it? It's, and it does its job. It's, it's, and I don't think it's we need to ugly. add a load of weight. No. Nah. I think ugly. the stuck sum guard, again, there are plenty of people out there who've put aftermarket sum guards on their KTMs. Um, I'm not sort of a sump smasher. But so I would like to polish it. We'll polish that. Thank you. So it's in the, it's in, this, I feel like the cleaning pile is going to be the biggest pile in there. I now. think that's going to be a very big pile. So on the rally bike subject, while we were out in Portugal, ah. Neil had Neil had his Dakar bike out there. Um, we talked before about me wanting a rally bike and being excited about and these rally bikes. You can see since I've actually healed up a little bit. I've yeah, your shoulder works now. That movement, <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> Yeah, Neil had his rally bike out there in, in, in Portugal. So it's a 2017? 2018. 2018. Husqvarna 450 Factory Rally. That's a pretty good name for a bike. Mm. Anything that's got factory in it. Yeah. So I had a go on that. And actually, I, I'm now scared of this. I might have a video. Hopefully, hopefully we have some videos. If not of him, it might be of me. But anyway, <laughs> I'll show you the bike. We'll get a picture of the bike. Any of <laughs> Yeah. Picture of the bike and videos. We can send that. Honestly, that thing was an absolute weapon. Like, it looks oh. in your mind, you're like, ah, oh, it's just an enduro bike with a big tool fairing. And, yeah, yeah. But they're unreal. They are so fast mm. and they're, they're like kind of hard and stiff and angry. Like, I was, yeah. I'm going to say, frightened of it a bit. You can't ride slowly on it. It's one of those bikes that it's, um, yeah, you've got to treat it like, it's like a driving a Fiesta down to the shops or a. Ferrari down to the shops. So I don't know. It's, it's a little bit of a difference. So with that in mind, what do you think this is going to be like when we built a 950 it's rally be bike? Amazing. This I is think going to be awesome. This is going to be one of those bikes that you're slightly scared every time you go near it. Yeah, I think so. I like that. Do you know what these are? So the tanks good. again. They're beautiful bits of kit. Are the fuel pumps? So the fuel pumps not 
No, fuel pump Anywhere is near the tank, not in the tank. No, nope. no, nope. fuel pump's separate. Again, these I think just need to clean up. Yeah. Oh, are you going to spray them and they bottle? We're back to the spray or, spraying or wrapping. I don't want to start a thing, but the bubbles. The bubbles are a problem. A problem. Yeah. I mean, you let it actually. Do you know what? They're clear tanks underneath. Yeah. What is the possibility we go full rally and go clear? Well, I mean, a clear a section, strip. A clear section of the to tank. To see to see what's in them. Yeah, we Which can do would that. Be cool. So it would be taking it back to plastic and then graphics. Paint off and graphics and clear tanks. Where do we start with this, Neil? To be so honest, let's it's... have a little look up close. Oh, that. Ready? Look at the. Layer you don't want to get your hands dirty, do you? Gook on that. That's what I'm here oh. for. <laughs> oh wait a minute, there is a label under here somewhere. Wow. That yeah, is disgusting, um... isn't it? Yeah, it is a little bit. It's um. Look at that, that is like blasting Look at this. on. That I mean, is a right uh, This is a vulnerable area for the engine anyway, and there's a spider living then behind it. An actual spider? Mm. Nice. Yeah, um, so, I mean, the engine we need to refresh. I want to kind of pull apart, give it a... So yeah, what is your what's the plans for the internals and what you could I and mean, well, what do you check? What I mean, in, obviously, in the, <laughs> obviously you do check the 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 valves, uh, uh, the valve clearance, clearances. check compression, little little going through, make sure the clutch is in good nick, yeah. uh, make sure the valve clearances are good. We can blank off these. These are the secondary air injection. Again, that's right. like a yeah. emi emissions thing for when the bike was homologated. So we okay. can take off those and blank them. Yeah. A few little bits and pieces like that. And then again, a little good bits. clean. I think we've just got a lot of cleaning to do, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> How are you fixed for the next three me. nights? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to do this with your Dakar bike, Neil? What, clean it? <laughs> Honestly, it's done 100 hours now. It's immaculate. If you don't get it dirty, there's something to be like said. Like riding on the dry sand in the Sahara, and uh, in Saudi, that's all it's done, and a little bit in Portugal, you on it. But, can, I, um, can I ask a question? Are you wearing a t-shirt with your own name on it? Um, yeah. It's <laughs> You're so factory, Neil. It was kind of a once in a lifetime, I'm going to do Dakar, that's it. Once me, I'll finish it and I'll be fine. I'll get out of my system, I'll never do it again, because it costs way too much money. And that was my theory. How's that working out for you, Neil? Because I didn't finish, because I smashed myself up, I do want to go back again. I really, really do. And um, it's it's a bit moreish, is it? It's like I've I've got a, an itch that needs scratching now. <laughs> <laughs> Better take that one up. What was the riding like on the deck? Was it good fun riding? Was it stressful riding? Was it um, hard? It was it. It started out quite stressful because if you can imagine, I was riding number 102 and you start... Is that on, riding... is that on your t-shirt as well? Yeah. It's not, is it? Exactly. Oh, look, look, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you start off in number order, it doesn't matter sort of what level rider you're at. And and you start down in my end of the, the field, you start off two a minute every 30 seconds. And dust was a massive, massive issue because of that. And for me, the first few days were a little bit stressful because I was riding way slower than I'm comfortable riding. And it sounds a bit weird. It sounds a bit funny. But if you're riding at the speed you know you can and, and quite fast and uh, you're comfortable and you can get in a routine and it's quite safe because you're focused. As soon as you ride a little bit slower, everything gets a little bit more... Uh, yeah, sometimes a little bit more difficult. <laughs> um, and that was the first few days, so that was a little bit stressful. Um, but actually, once we got started getting out riding on your own a little bit more and um, in a group that are uh, your speed, because you do find that naturally, God, it was amazing. The, the country is absolutely stunning. It's absolutely Beautiful, amazing, big canyons, rock sort of um, landscape. It's not, it wasn't all desert or um, sand. It was very, very varied um, to a 
degree, <laughs> like rocks. Um, rock formations were huge, huge rock formations. And it was fun to ride through them. It was fun, you'd, you'd be pretty fast. You'd be like, wow, that was cool. And, um, but yeah, um, that was uh, very surprising for me because I, I, I didn't know what to expect. All you heard was, it's gonna be sand, 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 sand dunes, big this, big that. And it, it wasn't, it was um, very, very, which is cool. Yeah, Saudi was a, a wicked place to ride. And I'd love to go back there with your mates and just ride, but I don't, you can, you can. The, the, the country's so big, you're so far away from everything. So it w would be a struggle just to go and ride, actually, for fun. Right, let's get this engine cleaned up. And then at least we'll have achieved one part of the massive pile of bits to clean. Doesn't that love the jobs you hate? Yes, I'm Mr. Muscle. Oh. So what's the what's the catchphrase of Silit Bangan? Bang and the dirt is gone. So there we are, another good session in the garage. We've got the makings of a plan-ish. Plan at the moment is, yeah, work our way through this big pile of bits. Again, when you're doing this stuff in your evenings around normal life, it's easy just to make it organized like this, and then you can come and grab and spend half an hour, clean one component, and gradually work everything across to the, the good to go pile. Apart from that, yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna hopefully get some, some shock rebuilding um, and some progress on the engine next. So stay tuned for the next episode and remember, get in those sheds and get those unfinished projects less unfinished.